there are saints whose mortal bodies have not fully decayed, or been corrupted, after death. Sometimes, a particular limb or organ of a saint's body has not decayed, even though the rest of the body has. They are bestowed upon this gift of incorruptibility by God. When these bodies are exhumed as part of their canonization process, some, after hundreds of years, are found to be completely intact. Some of the bodies still bleed after hundreds of years, while some exude a floral sweet scent also known as the odor of sanctity. Often hundreds of years old, the bodies of these saints show no signs of decay and are mysteriously incorruptible. To be considered incorruptible, the body has to be in an unusually preserved well state, with lifelike color and freshness. Lack of odor and some flexibility in the skin and joints are also signs of incorruptibility. Immediately after death, the body undergoes autolysis or self-digestion. Internal organs of the body decompose rapidly after death, typically within 24 to 72 hours. Three to five days later, the body starts to bloat, and blood containing foam leaks from the mouth and nose. Eight days later, the body turns green as the abdomen accumulates gas. Several weeks later, nails and teeth fall out as the body starts to liquefy. According to science, a deceased human decomposes rapidly after death. There are many arguments attempting to debunk incorruptibility. In some cases, environmental conditions may have protected the remains from decay. This might be the situation when bodies inexplicably decay rapidly after many decades of incorruptibility once they are moved, perhaps the original environment had somehow been particularly airtight. In other cases, recent investigations by pathologists, chemists, and radiologists suggest that the body of a saint was embalmed after death. There was no attempt at deceit or secrecy, but over time, the knowledge that embalming had taken place was lost. Occasionally, after exhumation and documented incorruptibility, a body was embalmed at a much later date. But what about those saints who withstood time, environmental conditions, or were not embalmed and yet were still found completely intact? In contrast to bodies that undergo natural or accidental preservation, the bodies of many, if not most, of the incorruptibles are neither dry nor rigid but are often moist and flexible, sometimes remaining so for centuries after the individual's death. Here are examples of saints who were found to be incorruptible long after the death. Saint Padre Pio. Padre Pio, also known as Saint Pio of Pietrelcina, was an Italian Capuchin friar, mystic, and stigmatist who lived from 1887 to 1968. He is widely regarded as one of the most popular and beloved saints of the 20th century. Padre Pio was born on the 25th of May 1887 in Pietrelcina, a small town in southern Italy. From a young age, he showed deep devotion to God and expressed a desire to become a priest. In 1903, at the age of 16, he joined the Capuchin Order and was ordained as a priest in 1910. One of the most remarkable aspects of Padre Pio's life was his experience of the stigmata. In 1918, while praying in the church of San Giovanni Rotondo, he received the visible wounds of Christ's crucifixion on his hands, feet, and side. These wounds bled and caused him great pain throughout his life. The phenomenon of the stigmata made Padre Pio widely known and attracted both devout followers and skeptics. Padre Pio was known for his piety, humility, and dedication to prayer. He spent long hours hearing confessions and providing spiritual guidance to those who sought his help. Many people believed that he had the gift of reading hearts and could accurately discern the sins and secrets of those who came to him. Another significant aspect of Padre Pio's life is his alleged incorruptibility. After his death on the 23rd of September 1968, his body was exhumed in 2008, 40 years later, as part of the canonization process. To the astonishment of those present, his body was found to be remarkably well preserved, showing little signs of decay. This phenomenon, known as incorruptibility, is when a saint's body does not undergo the usual process of decomposition. 
While it is not unique to Padre Pio, his incorrupt body has become one of the most famous examples of this phenomenon. The Catholic Church officially recognized Padre Pio's sanctity and declared him a saint on 16 June 2002. He is venerated as the patron saint of civil defense volunteers, adolescents, and stress relief. The sanctuary of San Giovanni Rotondo, where he spent most of his priestly life, has become a major pilgrimage site, attracting millions of visitors each year. Padre Pio's life and spirituality continue to inspire people around the world. His teachings on faith, prayer, and suffering have left a lasting impact, and many people turn to him for intercession and spiritual guidance. Saint Bernadette Saint Bernadette Subaru, also known as Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, was a French peasant girl who witnessed a series of apparitions of the Virgin Mary in the town of Lourdes, France. Her life, death, and the subsequent recognition of her incorrupt body hold significant importance in Catholicism. Bernadette Subaru was born on 7 January 1844, in Lourdes, a small town in southwestern France. In 1858, when she was just 14 years old, Bernadette had a series of 18 visions of a young woman in a grotto near the banks of the Gave de Pau River. The lady identified herself as the Immaculate Conception and instructed Bernadette to dig a spring in the ground, which would later become known as the famous Lourdes Spring, renowned for its healing properties. News of Bernadette's visions spread, attracting both devoted pilgrims and skeptical onlookers. Despite facing skepticism and doubt from some authorities, Bernadette remained steadfast in her account of the apparitions. The crowds and attention surrounding the apparitions caused Bernadette significant hardship throughout her life, and she eventually sought refuge in a convent. Bernadette entered the Sisters of Charity of Nevers in 1866 and took the religious name Sister Marie Bernard. She lived a humble and hidden life as a nun, dedicated to prayer, penance, and serving the sick. Bernadette's health gradually declined, and she suffered from tuberculosis of the bone. She passed away on 16 April 1879, at the age of 35. After her death, her body was initially buried in the convent cemetery. However, in 1909, her body was exhumed and found to be incorrupt, remaining remarkably preserved despite being buried for several decades. Her body appeared the same as when she had been alive, odorless and with supple skin and natural coloration, although the rosary in her hands had rusted over. Her body was then placed in a glass reliquary for public veneration. To this day, her incorrupt body rests in the chapel of Saint Bernadette at the Mother House of the Sisters of Charity in Nevers, France. Bernadette Subaru was canonized as a saint by the Catholic Church on 8 December 1933 by Pope Pius XI. She is celebrated as Saint Bernadette of Lourdes and is venerated as the patron saint of bodily illness, poverty, and Lourdes pilgrims. Lourdes has become one of the most important pilgrimage sites in the world, drawing millions of people seeking healing and spiritual consolation. The incorruptibility of Bernadette's body is seen as a sign of her sanctity and a confirmation of the authenticity of the apparitions she experienced. It is viewed by many as a miraculous phenomenon, as her body has remained intact and recognizable despite the natural process of decomposition. The preservation of her body serves as a testament to her life, her role in the Lourdes apparitions, and her ongoing spiritual influence. Francis Xavier Saint Francis Xavier was a Spanish Jesuit missionary who played a significant role in the spread of Christianity, particularly in Asia during the 16th century. His life, dedicated to evangelization and service, and his posthumous incorruptibility have made him one of the most renowned saints in Catholicism. Francis Xavier was born on 7 April 1506, in the Kingdom of Navarre, present-day Spain. He studied at the University of Paris, where he became friends with Ignatius of Loyola, who would later found the Society of Jesus, commonly known as the Jesuits. Inspired by Ignatius, Francis Xavier joined the newly formed religious order in 1534, 
taking vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. In 1540, Francis Xavier was ordained as a priest and became one of the seven founding members of the Society of Jesus. He was sent as a missionary to India in 1542, arriving in Goa, then a Portuguese colony. There, he began his tireless efforts to spread Christianity, establishing missions, teaching the faith, and baptizing thousands of converts. During his missionary work, Francis Xavier traveled extensively throughout Asia, including Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Japan, and the Moluccas. He faced numerous challenges, such as language barriers, cultural differences, and political opposition, but remained steadfast in his mission. He is credited with introducing Christianity to many regions and played a crucial role in establishing the church in Japan. Francis Xavier's life was marked by his deep faith, selflessness, and dedication to serving others. He worked tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of the poor and marginalized, providing both spiritual and material assistance. Sadly, on the 2nd of December 1552, while on a missionary journey to China, Francis Xavier fell ill on the island of Shangchuan and passed away at the age of 46. His body was initially buried on the island but was later exhumed and transferred to various locations before finally resting in the Basilica of Bom Jesus in Goa, India. The phenomenon of incorruptibility is associated with St. Francis Xavier's body. When his remains were last exhumed in 1614, over 60 years after his death, they were found to be remarkably well preserved. His body is still considered to be incorrupt today, with the exception of the right forearm, which was detached and sent to Rome as a relic. St. Francis Xavier was canonized by the Catholic Church in 1622 by Pope Gregory XV. He is venerated as the patron saint of missionaries, navigators, and the Far East. His life and work continue to inspire countless people to this day, and his incorrupt body serves as a testament to his enduring spiritual influence and sanctity. Cecilia. Saint Cecilia is a revered saint in Christianity, known for her steadfast faith and association with music. While various accounts and legends surround her life, the general story of Saint Cecilia revolves around her martyrdom and the subsequent veneration of her incorrupt body. According to tradition, Saint Cecilia was born in Rome, Italy, in the 2nd or 3rd century AD. She came from a noble Roman family and was raised as a Christian. Cecilia vowed to remain a virgin and dedicated herself to God, but her parents arranged a marriage with a pagan nobleman named Valerian. During her wedding ceremony, Cecilia reportedly sang to God in her heart, desiring to preserve her purity. It is said that Cecilia converted her husband to Christianity, and both of them pledged to live a chaste and virtuous life. Together, they devoted themselves to acts of charity and assisting persecuted Christians. Their unwavering faith eventually led to their martyrdom. Cecilia and Valerian were arrested and brought before the Roman authorities for their refusal to renounce their Christian beliefs. Despite their persecution, they remained steadfast in their faith. Valerian was beheaded, while Cecilia faced various attempts at execution, including suffocation in her own bathhouse. However, these attempts failed, and she remained alive. According to one account, Cecilia was eventually sentenced to death by beheading. The executioner made three attempts to decapitate her, but failed to sever her head completely. Cecilia lived for three more days, during which she continued to preach and convert others to Christianity. Her martyrdom is believed to have occurred around the year 230 AD. After her death, Saint Cecilia was buried in the catacombs of Calixtus in Rome. In the 16th century, her tomb was opened, and her body was found to be incorrupt, seemingly untouched by decay. This discovery further solidified her status as a revered saint. The incorruptibility of Saint Cecilia's body, like many other incorruptible saints, is viewed as a miraculous phenomenon. It is seen as a sign of her sanctity and divine favor. Her incorrupt body has been an object of veneration and pilgrimage for centuries. 
Saint Cecilia is particularly celebrated as the patron saint of musicians, singers, and church music. She is often depicted in art playing musical instruments, emphasizing her connection to music and harmony. Her feast day is celebrated on November 22nd in the Catholic Church, and she continues to inspire and intercede for those devoted to the arts and the Christian faith. Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony of Padua, also known as Saint Anthony of Lisbon, was a prominent Franciscan friar and preacher known for his deep devotion, knowledge, and miraculous abilities. His life, marked by his dedication to serving the poor and spreading the gospel, has made him one of the most beloved saints in Catholicism. Anthony was born as Fernando Martins de Bulhos in Lisbon, Portugal, around the year 1195. He joined the canons regular of St. Augustine at a young age but later encountered the first group of Franciscan friars who were martyred in Morocco. Inspired by their witness, he became a Franciscan friar, taking the name Anthony. Anthony was known for his exceptional preaching skills and extensive theological knowledge. He traveled extensively, spreading the teachings of Christianity and working to convert those who had strayed from the faith. His sermons were renowned for their eloquence and clarity, attracting large crowds wherever he preached. One notable aspect of St. Anthony's life was his reputation for performing miracles. Numerous accounts attest to his ability to heal the sick, find lost objects, and convert sinners through his preaching. These miracles further enhanced his popularity and drew many people to the faith. St. Anthony died on June 13, 1231, at the age of 35 in Padua, Italy. After his death, his body was initially buried in the church of Santa Maria Mater Domini in Padua. However, in 1263, his remains were transferred to the newly built Basilica of St. Anthony in Padua, where they rest today. The incorruptibility of St. Anthony's tongue is a notable aspect of his incorrupt body. When his body was exhumed in 1263, 32 years after his death, it was found to have decayed except for his tongue, which remained fresh and uncorrupted. This phenomenon is seen as a symbol of his gift of preaching and his ability to convey the truth of the gospel with power and clarity. The Basilica of St. Anthony in Padua continues to be a major pilgrimage site, attracting millions of visitors each year who seek his intercession and pray at his tomb. St. Anthony is venerated as the patron saint of lost items, the poor, and the elderly. His feast day is celebrated on June 13th, and his influence as a preacher and miracle worker continues to inspire devotion and faith in people around the world. Truly miraculous or not, the incorrupt bodies of saints are considered holy relics and are treated with great esteem in both the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. Some are administered acid baths or other treatments to help sustain their incorruptibility. Many are encased in wax effigies or are given wax masks that represent their condition upon discovery. Others are reburied, and a metal, stone, or wax sculpture of the corpse is arrayed above or near the actual body. Some are displayed directly in glass caskets, usually with a thin wax layer over the skin. While their veneration is often associated with answered prayers and miracles, these relics also serve as visual reminders of the holy men and women that have lived and died in their faith and of the mortality that faces us all.